To be honest, most of the Obsidian updates recently haven't interested me that much. Yes, the speed has been great, the syncs have been great, but there was something in this Insider release that I was like, wow. If we have a look at the release notes, you can see we're version 1.7.4, so this is still Insiders, not for everyone. Uh, we've got some improvements to performance again, which is really nice to see, just not something I can really like rave about. But then we have editable page previews and footnotes just want to say that again that's editable page previews and footnotes for those of you that don't know what that means i'm going to show you but something else i want to discuss is the obsidian clipper inside of the discord you can see in the pinned messages you can get the extension via github google chrome web store firefox and apple store you can see i use microsoft edge so i can install the obsidian web clipper onto edge but let's get back to this editable page preview so if i have a link to any file so i go bracket bracket then type in quick notes so i'm actually linking to the same file this is the quick notes file and i have a link to the quick notes file if i go into the settings go to page preview you can see i don't have the control required so it just shows inside of my editor view these are my settings you can change them as you want but this means when i hover over this link it shows the page preview now if i left click i can now edit this so you can see i'm editing the file obviously it's in itself but adding new text you can see i'm now editing the file in the page preview where this is really useful is if i have another file let's say i go to memory now memory is a project file it's quite a big project file you can see we've got all of the stuff at the top i click in i can then scroll down to any points let's say i want to add a point this is interesting I've edited the memory file without actually having to open up the file. Let's just open it up quickly. So that was a middle mouse click. Uh, and I go down to, this is interesting. There it is. So I'm editing the file without actually going into the file. This is really useful when you're doing sources like I do. If we use this quick notes as a source file, imagine I've got all the source information in here and these are the points that I have inside of this file. What I would do is come down to the project. So this is the project, go to the points section. I then go copy, paste, copy, paste. And then at the bottom, I will have a link to quick notes so now i have the source file quick notes in the project file what i can do with this editable notes is oh this point let me go have a look okay i can now copy the text so Control c and then Control v and paste i can now copy the text from the editable window i can then edit the text of course and go back to the context point and add something in so maybe this is a high priority point. I can do it from this window rather than having to open it up in another tab. Now for footnote users, there's also been an update with the way that you can edit and get rid of footnotes and IDs, etc. I'm not a big footnote user, but it's something to pay attention to. Now to the Obsidian Clipper. Now this is in beta and it has been working for a while, but because you can install it on the browser that you currently use, I figured I'd give this a go. So I've put in two different vaults. I haven't changed any of the hotkeys, but you can change the hotkeys. You can see, go to the extensions and shortcuts. The main one that I will probably use is the quick clip and maybe the toggle highlighter. It depends what it is that I'm clipping because most of the time it's videos. And then you can turn on or off whether it opens the note once you've clipped it. I'm going to keep it turned off. So when I clip something, it's going to open that file in Obsidian. I'm not going to bother touching any of these settings and going to the properties. I'm going to leave these here so you can see what it looks like to start with, but I'm actually going to remove some of these and I'm going to remove those in the default template so you can see properties and there's a, a delete bin down the side i'll do that in a minute but then in the highlighter settings you can export highlights not interested in that always show highlights which is an interesting one so if you highlight something on a page so if we go to this atomic habits page you can see there's a yellow box around this bit and there's also a yellow box around this point they are staying because i've highlighted those points before if i scroll down to this section click on the clipper and then click on the highlight tool enable highlighter i can see i have three current highlights and i can then you can see i can highlight that sentence i can highlight just that sentence or i can highlight an entire block so now i have six different highlights all of them currently showing on the page however if i come back to the settings and turn this 
off. At the moment, it's showing the highlights because I've got the highlight up. If, however, I open up the page again, you can see the highlights have gone. So I've actually opened it up twice. I'm just split screening my browser for a second. You can see I've got the same web page open twice. This one is in the highlighter mode, which is why we've got the clip highlights and the delete at the top. It's showing the highlights. This one isn't, so it's not showing the highlights. But if I turn this on, it's now showing the highlights on the page, even though I'm not in the highlighter mode. That means if I open it in the future, it will show that I've highlighted the thing. Now I don't need that, so I'm going to remove that page. The other setting in here is the clip behavior, so whether I want to replace the content or do nothing if the highlighted page has already been taken. So looking at the default template, before I push the clip, you can see the name is default. The clip behavior is create a new note because I wanted to make a new file, but you can add it to existing notes or to a daily note at the bottom or at the top. This would be a new source file for me, so it's going to be a new note. I want the note title to be the actual name. You can add more. There's the learn more button to find out more about titling the note. The note location I'm going to put it into the clipped folder or into a clipped folder, but this will go into my sources folder once I'm not doing this video. The vault that it goes into, you can see I can go to research Eastbourne trampoline because that's the other vault I have or the last one used. I'm going to keep it to research because I'm not going to clip anything to Eastbourne trampoline. And this is something I'm going to explore after this video, but there are template triggers so I can have a different template. And if there is a URL pattern that matches, it may trigger a different template. For example, YouTube video trigger YouTube video template. That's something I'm going to play with. Then we have the properties at the top of the file and then the actual note content. So let's clip the highlights. Brings up the window. There's those properties that it's done automatically. I'm going to toggle those shut. And then we have the content of the page. And these are the highlights. So I wanted to go to the research vault and it's going to go to a clipped folder. And just for clarification, I don't have a clipped folder at the moment, so it will make a clipped folder. Uh, let's go add to Obsidian. You see there's the clipped folder. It's already opened the note, and there it is. So I've got the article title as the title. I then have the title inside of a properties, source, author, publish, created, description, and tags. Then inside of the file, we've got the image highlight. You can see it's actually an external link, not an internal link, so it's not an image inside of Obsidian. It's going out to the image online, which, which means you have to be online to be able to see this image. There's probably a way to change that. I haven't looked at that yet. And then I've got the highlighted points from the page. Now, if I delete all of these highlights and now I come in to clip it, you can see it's now got everything in the entire page. So now I'm going to add it to Obsidian. Because it's got the exact same title, it's now got a one at the end because you can't have duplicate files in Obsidian. And now I've got the entire page, the entire article, inside of my obsidian. You'll notice I've got the video because it's an external link. Pictures have been brought in again as external links and all the headings have been brought in at the appropriate sizes. So heading one, heading two, which I think makes it a pretty good clipper. Now, when I go to the browser, you can see at the top, you can change the templates so at the moment. It's the default template going into the three dots opens up the, the, all the page variables. I, to be honest, I will probably never touch this, but uh, it looks useful, I guess. Something for me to explore. Then when we go to the highlights, that goes to the highlight option. But if we go back to the settings in this template, I want to remove some of these because I don't want the title. I don't want the published date. I don't want the created date. I don't want a description and I don't want a tag. I also want the authors to be above the source. So now let's go on to a different article. This is an article I recently went through in a different video. I'll leave a link to in the top right about it. If I go to the clipper, you can see there's the source, there's the author, and I can add to Obsidian. And there we have the title, we've got the source, we've got the author, and then we have all of the article inside of my Obsidian. This clipper means that I don't need to actually save a web article into a PDF and then put it into Zotero and then highlight it and then bring it into Obsidian because I can do the highlighting on the web, on the browser, which saves a few steps, but also means that things are saved when I go back onto that page later on. Now, I don't know how long that history will be, but I will have the clipping inside of my Obsidian. Combining this clipper with the editable page previews is actually gonna change my workflow significantly for when I'm writing articles and writing a book, which is kind of what I'm doing now.